I'm Christopher Golden. I've been a novelist for 22 years. I do two comic book series with Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy, and they are published regularly. One is called Baltimore, one is called Joe Golem, a cult detective. Both of them from Dark Horse Comics. In December of this year, there'll be the paperback release of my most recent novel, Dead Ringers, which is set in Boston. And in April of next year, my new hardcover from St. Martin's Press, which is called Ararat, which I'm super excited about. It's an epic supernatural thriller about a group of people who find Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat and what they find inside it. I grew up in Framingham and Halloween was always, and still, as far as I'm concerned, is always the best holiday. We lived in a great neighborhood for trick-or-treating, so my brother and I would go out with the pillowcases and uh, we would go through the entire neighborhood and then uh, when the pillowcases were full, we would go back, dump them out, and start all over again. And uh, you can't do that now because there are too many limitations on how much time, you know. But in those days, as long as the front light was on, they were still giving out candy. The best thing I, I, I remember doing for costume stuff on Halloween was um, my mom actually um, is missing most of her left hand. And when she was young, she was a singer. She sang off Broadway and she had a, uh, um, a prosthetic hand. And so um, as a kid of like nine or 10, I took that and I was Frankenstein and I had the, uh, the jacket and I was holding it from the inside. And when I'd say trick or treat and the person would answer the door, I would go to shake their hand with my left and then they'd grab it and I would pull my hand away and scream and they'd be holding the hand. So yeah, that was, uh, that was great. So that was my first scaring people uh, experience. My brother and I, growing up, watched Creature Double Feature on Channel 56, and I always gravitated toward things like The Twilight Zone and Kolchak the Night Stalker. It only lasted one season, but the year after, they re-ran it at, at 11 p.m. I begged my dad to wake me up to watch it, and so I saw the whole series at probably seven years old, um, and that was, you know, great. I mean, it was such a great show, and it still is one of probably the most influential things um, for me to be interested in horror and the supernatural. As far as books are concerned, I think I, I, I then went on to sort of little collections of, or anthologies of stories and then I found Stephen King. And from that point forward, uh, I remember being in the, in the seventh grade at Catholic school reading Firestarter during uh, study and you know one of the nuns was like looking down her nose at it and uh, I'm thinking, but I'm reading, you know, sort of an adult book. And that was it. I just read, I read a lot of horror in those days. I read a lot of other kinds of things as well, but um, I just, uh, every horror novel I could get my hands on. I think it has to be a balance. I mean, I think there's a place for gore. I don't object to it. It depends on what kind of story you're telling and what effect you're attempting to pull off. In film and in prose as well, I would say one of the things I really don't go in for are things that are involving torture and things like that because I just feel like it's so gratuitous and it's so pornographic um, in its presentation of violence and gore that I don't know who that's for but it isn't for me. I definitely think that my concerns about um, people in general about humanity and about you know mental health and things like that come into play um, and my political concerns come in, my concerns for the future, especially in a novel I did that came out last year called Tin Men. I don't know, about 10 years ago, I was at a convention and I was being interviewed and they asked me, what scares you the most? Which is a typical question that people ask horror writers. So I said, what really scares me is that we finally have reached a point in our society where politicians no longer have to pretend that they're lying to us. They just lie and they know we know they're lying, and they don't care that we know. And that was sort of the beginning for me of looking at, um, looking toward writing a different kind of fiction. I don't write a lot of it, but um, Tin Men is, is very much about fear, just like my horror novels, but it's about my fears about where we're headed. Um, and then it plays out in a great sort of uh, big science fiction military thriller kind of crazy action story, but the underpinning of it all is still this thing that I think we should all be terrified about. I'm sure there have been times when I've been writing about a theme that I wasn't realizing 
at the time that I was writing about it. I do know that one of the things that I write most commonly about is loss of identity, partly because I had an uncle who, who had Alzheimer's disease, I have another uncle who has it now, and I find it the most terrifying thing, this idea of loss of identity. And I've actually written that into it, or had it be the sort of real foundation of a number of my works, the, the idea of what it's like to lose yourself and what it means. I did a novel a number of years ago called Wildwood Road, and Wildwood Road fundamentally concerns this idea of what would happen if someone was able to go into your past um, or into your mind and erase your memories of all of the good things. If they left the bad stuff but took away all the things that gave you hope in the past, that made you feel good, and left just the bad stuff, what kind of change would that make on you as a person? Who would you be then, you know? So there are a lot of works of mine that sort of play in that same area. Um, and I think that in cases like that, even if you didn't know you were afraid of it before you read it, you can't read that and not be haunted by this sort of idea of loss of identity. I always try to flip things on their heads. If it's something that is a typical, you know, it's not like I'm gravitating toward, I can't wait to write a vampire story. But if I come up with a way to invert that or to subvert the expectations of the audience, I'd like to do that because that's interesting. I'm not interested in doing a werewolf story, but I did four novels in this series called Prowlers that is very different from the typical werewolf. It's not people who've been cursed to become animals, it's animals actually who can look like people for the purposes of masquerading themselves so they can infiltrate humanity and kill us. You know, I always try to find some angle that would be interesting to me. Thematically then, it's more about the things that I'm afraid of. I always say that no matter what I'm writing about, I'm still really writing about fear. It just depends on what brand. I think when you are you know, sitting on your couch reading a book, or in a movie theater, or um, watching television, and something terrifies you, and you really feel fear, that is an extraordinarily cathartic experience. You have this heightened sense where you know, the, your, the chills run up your back and the tension is in all of your muscles and you're holding your breath. And when the moment passes, you get to exhale and you feel great. And so like comedy, horror stories and scary stories can give you that same kind of catharsis because it's happening in a safe environment. Um, I think that the worst thing about the world we're living in today is we never get the moment to exhale and feel like we're safe.